listening to the Out There Hour on AlternativeFutureRadio.com. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Out There Hour with Basil and Mark, don't you know? We're going to have a smashing time today. The Out There Hour on Alternative Future Radio. The Out There Hour with Basil and Mark www.alternativefutureradio.com Yay! Yay! Good morning, Mark. <laughs> Good evening, Basil. <laughs> Good afternoon, the world. <laughs> I'm just looking at our Skype. Yeah. They're all on it. All our yeah. guests. Uh, Josh, all our guests are all on. Joshua Shapiro, Paul Gershio. Pat Junard. Um, God, we've got pretty much everybody, Patrick. Hey, Jonathan Evans, Andrew Evans, Johnson, yeah, Doctor David Hunt, Doctor David, Annie Hunt. Cheslick coming on soon. Coming on soon. There's old Terry. Wonderful. Oh, speaking, of guests, speaking of yes, guests, speaking of guests, 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 like, guests. Yes, uh, Dan, today's guest, Dan Willis. Dan Willis. Yes. Who is he? He is a former naval uh, intelligence officer of of sorts. I think he worked in. Uh, he's, in he's a Vietnam. Decryption. He's a Vietnam vet. We for. Oh, we, 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 should, we should just ask him about that. He's in a, yeah, well, but, but we won't. <laughs> <laughs> he's, <laughs> he, he was an ABC newsman. He was, yeah. Um, and he's engineer. worked as an engineer as well, yeah. Um, and basically, he is one of the, I think it's 20 or so people who testified at the Disclosure Project's uh, National Press Club event in Washington, D.C. in the year 2000. Well, what's the D- Disclosure Project, you ask, and... Uh, so you may well ask. So you may well. Are you um, going to answer? <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to ask and answer that. It's, uh, it's You've got high-ranking military, high-ranking air force, high-ranking surveillance. It's a who's who of top brass. Uh, coming out to say, yes, aliens are real. And we've been uh, cohorting with them for some time. Yes. Reverse engineering their technology and all manner of other things. And UFOs. And the mainstream media totally buried it, made a joke of the whole thing. Yeah. Um yeah. And these guys are still uh, struggling to get the uh, news out. So if you've ever wondered, are aliens real? Well, according to the top brass, yes, they are. Yeah. So, you know. uh, www.disclosureproject.org is his website. And, uh, well. It's, it's quite a big deal. It is. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, so some of these people are very, uh, very well respected. Very important. Shall we do it? Yeah, let's talk to Dan. Do you know what comes first? Advert. <laughs> you could give to the Red Cross. You could contribute to the March of Dimes. You could donate to the Salvation Army. Or for just $1.99, you could get the Alternative Future Radio Android application and do something that will actually make a difference in your life. Find out more at AlternativeFutureRadio.com. Okay, so hopefully uh, we should now have uh, Mr. Dan Willis on the line. Uh, Dan, do we have you there? Yes, I am here. Excellent, excellent. Uh, you're in Oregon, Dan, and uh, you're you're up a mountain somewhere. We were just we were just mentioning that before we came on air. You 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 live off grid, up a up a hill. Yeah, I live uh, out in the wilderness on top of a mountain off grid, and, um, and this is linked through. Uh, a remote uh, repeater that uh, is going through Skype. Fantastic, fantastic. I must say, I was looking at your, I think I saw a picture of where you live some, on a website somewhere. It's a geodesic dome that you live in, isn't it, Dan? Yeah, it's a cement geodesic dome. It's a hurricane, tornado, fireproof, just ready for today's weather. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must say, before we get on to um, to, to why, why you're here and the Disclosure Project and all that, I must say, or must ask, should I say, what made you choose that location and 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 building to, structure? What is, is there a reason behind that? I um, I've always had a fascination with uh, geometry, and uh, I uh, many years ago I worked with the uh, top scientists from IBM that was working with uh, some interesting aspects of of paranormal, I guess you could say, with. Uh, uh, geometry and consciousness and things like that. So it wow. just you know intrigued my interest, and uh, so I've always been fascinated with uh, you know 
geometry and how it all ties into all this, a, a kind this, of a the whole scheme of things. <laughs> it's a kind of a feng shui type of thing, is it? Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Is it a type of a feng shui principle? Um, oh, I'm sorry, the audio is a little bit hard. I'm, oh. one, one more time. Go for it, Bell. <laughs> is, it a, is it a type of a, a feng shui? It's where you move the furniture around and paint the house in certain colors to... To, to, to uh, improve your living standards. Oh, oh, you mean feng shui? Feng shui, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, um, they, they in the, according to the masters, they like rounded shapes. So, you know, yeah. geodesic dome fits in with uh, good feng shui. <laughs> I saw that there, and I, um, I was thinking, uh, probably for the third time today, I'm about to mention Buckminster Fuller. He uh, he's a very interesting chap, and I, I, when you talk about geometry and the shape of your house, you, I assume you must know a lot about his works. Yeah, what a great mind! I, I love this this thing about you know don't fight the existing reality, just create a new one and makes the old one obsolete, and everybody moves over to it. I love that that quote from him. I actually got to use the word hyperbolic paraboloid in conversation today. You don't get to do that very often. <laughs> A friend of mine was making a YouTube video and he was showing the Olympic Stadium for the diving and it is a hyperbolic paraboloid. Very uh, odd, unusual shape. Which I believe he invented. Anyway, anyway. Basil's, Basil's giving me the uh, the <laughs> eye. Start talking about what you're supposed to be well, talking about. <laughs> well, Dan, we have Dan here and apparently I'm like the many millions mm -hmm. of other people in the world yep. who uh, should have known about the uh, Disclosure Project but didn't know for some extraordinary reason. Mm. Uh, the Disclosure Project, if I'm correct in saying this, is uh, where uh, many of the uh, military and um, Air Force bigwigs <laughs> came out to uh, say, well, what you thought about UFOs and aliens was true. They do exist. And yet I've never heard, heard of it. How can that be, Dan? Huh. Um, you mean to say they n never heard of the Disclosure Project? No, uh, I've never heard of it. Most people have, I mean, in uh, fairness. Yes. It, oh, yeah. well, hey, <laughs> this is the topic of today's discussion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get there in the end. Um, it's, well, you know, um, it's, it got about a minute and a half. <laughs> of, uh, of coverage on CNN, although there was like 22 cameras in the back row of all the major networks. Mm. And, and, you know, when I went to Washington, um, you know, the night before, uh, you know, I, I ended up going because uh, somebody else, uh, let's say they, uh, they decided to back out, you know, and so mm. there was an opening there. And... Uh, and so, you know, I volunteered to go. And the night before getting on the plane, I was, at night, I was tossing and turning. I had this, this bizarre dream that uh, I was there at the press club. And I, I, was, I was trying to imagine, you know, with all the testimonies that were coming out, you know, about the, you know, bases on the other side of the moon. Mm -hmm. You've got 57 different species, you know, the, you know just the, the whole gamut of, of testimonies. You know, how could this on all the major networks not just drive a congressional hearing and, and change everything as we know it on this planet? Yeah. Um, so in this dream I was having, um, everybody, all the witnesses, I knew a lot of the witnesses, and I knew a lot of the testimonies and things, and so I was, was pretty aware of, of the whole spectrum of, of testimonies, you mm -hmm. know, there are hundreds of witnesses, you know, over 500 of them, uh, which 20 were, you know, um, <laughs> willing to go in front of the cameras. Mm. Um, anyway, I, I had this dream that we all gave our testimonies, mm. and at the end of it, you know, a, um, a uh, black ops or whatever agent came up and said, you know, he... He discredited each one of us, saying, "Well, that's this is a top secret project here, and this and that. You've all broken national security and everything like that." Yeah. And everybody had their mouth dropped because they knew it was a lie, you know. Um, and I walked up to the man and I and I shook his hand and I said, "You know, I just have to hand it to you, you know, for <clears throat> keeping the secrecy all these years. You guys have been doing such a fantastic job, you know." <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, just sort of a, you know, it was kind of an interesting thing. But, you know, when we went to Washington and we gave the testimonies for real, um, they didn't need anybody to discredit them with the black ops. The media did it for them. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, the, uh, Dan, I've got the CNN clip. You're one minute 43 seconds on CNN. Do you want me to play it, Dan? Sure, sure. Yeah, let's... let's uh, <laughs> we can let's, listen let's to imagine the, uh, the entirety the, of their, their coverage of your, your, your large press conference. And considering who, who, was, who was the witnesses, I mean, these are major military men. They're pr pretty good witnesses. Um, uh, CIA, I believe. All manner of what? people. You know, there's going to be in the actual National Press Club, which anybody can go to disclosureproject.org and they can listen to the whole hour and a half of testimonies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's let's pretend that I'm giving you an assignment and you're you're to clean up and sanitize this so there's no no disclosing whatsoever about any illegal rogue operations within the government mm -hmm. and mm. there's nothing mm. uh, that, that just make the whole thing seem as though uh, we want to have a congressional hearing that that we're not alone and that UFOs are real and that's the whole purpose of it. This, this have nothing, nothing that, uh, that possibly implicates that there is uh, Absolute, absolute evidence that government's been infiltrated and that uh, there's there's technology that's been suppressed for 50 years, and so you know if you want, go ahead and, and play the uh, hmm. the actual CNN's 90 second uh, okay. coverage. Yep, will do. Life on other planets. Some former military and government personnel say they have proof there is. Elaine Kihano explains. We've seen the photographs and heard the stories of what some say is evidence of UFOs. Now a group of scientists, former Air Force and FAA officials, is lending its voice to the argument that we are not alone. Dr. Stephen Greer heads up the Disclosure Project, a group that compiles information from people who say they've encountered extraterrestrial forms of life. We can establish through this testimony that these objects of extraterrestrial origin have been tracked on radar going thousands of miles per hour, stopping and making right-hand turns. Since 1993, Dr. Greer says he has videotaped testimony from more than 100 people about what they say are close encounters. People like retired Navy Commander Pilot Graham Bethune, who believes he saw a UFO 50 years ago while flying to Newfoundland. Then it appeared over to the right and moved out slowly and flew with us. It was still not at our altitude, but we could see the shape of it. It had a dome. In addition, the Disclosure Project says it has documents supporting its case, including FAA records and CIA memos. What do members plan to do with their information? They hope Congress and President Bush take notice. They want to see congressional hearings into the matter, despite criticism from skeptics. Those that don't want to believe you will never believe you anyway, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the truth. A spokesperson for the Senate Science, Technology, and Space Committee says no congressional hearings are planned right now. Elaine Quijano, CNN. Exactly. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, yeah, Mark, <laughs> you want to, want to die? Shall we dissect that? Go on, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, this is interesting because I've kind of looked at how, how they very carefully, um, you know, you know, in psychological operations, what you want to do is you want to have a perception of a certain thing. If you're going to get out to the masses, yep. you know, in the in the military, you know, if you're going to um, if you're going to control an enemy, what's the first thing you attack? You attack their communications. Yeah. Then you maintain control. Yeah. Um, in this uh, in this little ninety second clip was a masterful work of. of of, of psychological operations. Um, in the first part, you want to make it sound like this is an issue uh, about life on other planets and some government personnel addressing this this topic specifically yep. and nothing else. You know, when they say, is there life on other planets? Some government personnel say there is proof there is. Mm -hmm. And then you want to make it sound like there's nothing new. Stories we've heard before, you know. 
We've seen the photographs and stories of what some say is evidence of UFO, right? And then make it sound as if we're just another group joining in on the argument that we're not alone and nothing else, right? Mm -hmm. And says, now a group of scientists, former Air Force and FAA officials, lending its voice that we are not alone. You know, lending its yeah, voice. Yeah, lending right? its voice. Yeah, that's the key. <laughs> and then, then it's really interesting, the part that they... Dr. Greer, throughout the, and if you go to the disclosureproject.org and you listen to the entire, you know, press conference, everything he says is dangerous, you know. Mm. And the part that they just edit out, um, where Dr. Greer is saying, um, we can establish through this testimony these objects have been, of extraterrestrial origin have been tracked on radar going thousands of miles per hour, stopping and making right hand turns. And if you go to, if you go to the full uh, uh, thing of what Stephen was saying, mm -hmm. right after that, they cut it, right, where he says, and they use anti-gravity propulsion systems, which we have already figured out how they work in classified projects in the United States, Great Britain, and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes on like that. Yeah. Um, so basically, they've, just, they, they've whittled it down to, to just hearsay and and buzzwords that, that that suit a different agenda to the one that you intended precisely precisely and and then uh, make it sound like we want to have a congressional hearing you know using FAA CIA memos about the reality of UFOs and there are views of others which oppose this being valid you know and and then they have uh, John Callahan saying, uh, you know, mm -hmm. reality reviewers of UFOs, you know, and then they want to close with a response from Capitol Hill regarding the congress congressional hearing request as no congressional hearings are planned right now. <clears throat> In other words, there will be no further response, you know, mm. so it, it's a very masterful little piece that CNN did. And, you know, right after... I was on CNN with with this this whole um, national press club. Um, C, um, CBS sent a special assignment team to, just to interview me specifically, and I told them, "Look, I'm not going to do this uh, interview unless I'm I can say that we have the scientists, and we do." that are in these black projects that can prove we have technologies that can end the energy and environmental crisis. Mm -hmm. And they promised up and down, they interviewed me on camera for about 40 minutes, and when they got done, uh, they did a cookie cutter of exactly like CNN. Yep. And the only thing I said was that uh, we've reached a critical time where the truth needs to be revealed to the people, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and the... Uh, the person who was in charge of it, uh, the lady, uh, she was in tears. She says, you know, I've never had this happen before. Uh, the higher executives made me cut out that part. I couldn't, I couldn't do it, mm. you know. And, you know, it's interesting. Daniel Sheehan, who is one of the witnesses, he uh, has a list of at least 42 CIA NSA operatives that are in uh, high positions in, in the major media that, whose sole purpose is to sanitize uh, anything that comes out. Mm. And there's also a document that is on the Disclosure Project site that is back in 91 saying that the CIA basically has uh, it's a CIA memo saying that they have relationships with every single newspaper wire mm. service so that they can spin, kill, a story in the interest of national security. Yeah. But so the, you know, yeah, the the disclosure uh, project though, it was twenty very credible witnesses. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, nuclear launch officers, mm. uh, you know, people who um, had, you know, top secret security clearances, mm. uh, people who. Now, I was one of the least credible, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tried to get, uh, you know, I was in communications, and um, I had a high-level top-secret clearance. I worked at the uh, communications station in San Francisco. Mm. It, was a, it was the most heavily um, 
heavy traffic military communication station on the planet back in 1969, you know, back when we were going to the moon. Mm. And there was a ship that, I was a high-speed code operator, and there was a ship off the coast of Alaska that the crew was witnessing a uh, off-port bow of basically a flying saucer. Uh, it was glowing, uh, reddish-orange, coming merging out of the ocean. Mm -hmm. And the uh, ship's radar operator tracked it going over 7,000 miles per hour, coming out of the ocean and shooting off into space. Uh, it was uh, a secret level priority message going to the chief of naval operations. And uh, I tried to go, go through the Office of Naval Intelligence to tr under the Freedom of Information Act to try to bring the documentation, but they mm -hmm. said it was destroyed. But <laughs> I like my stuff. Uh, the other witnesses, many of them had all the official, you know, Air Force offices, special investigations, mm -hmm. documentation. Mm -hmm. John Callahan had all the stuff that the CIA didn't get, you know, that he had backups of. And, you know, many people had all the supporting documentation. Um, so there was a lot more than just CIA memos and FAA records. They never got into the nitty gritty of what was in those CIA memos and, and FAA records. But uh, it, the news media, uh, you know, made it sound as though, you know, that the only purpose of this uh, disclosure was about the reality of UFOs. We're actually, we were attempting to disclose that our our government, you know, has been infiltrated uh, by the corporations. Mm -hmm. And this is back in the 50s. And that uh, they basically seized control of the whole issue and that they have maintained control while keeping uh, the technologies that were reverse engineered, um, you know, hidden and suppressed for over 50 years while they, you know, continue to profiteer and uh, keep our civilization in a, in a retarded state, but they can maintain profits and, uh, mm. you know, <laughs> the bare minimum. Keep, keep Dan, uh, Dan, you, speaking of um, the ONI and national security and CIA, uh, how do you stand with, with breaking national security legislations? I, I'm not sure what the American equivalent is. We have the Official Secrets Act in, in the UK, and I, I don't know what the versions of that are where you are. I'm sure you have something you sign up to when you join the uh, armed oh, forces. Um, and I, I'm, I'm imagining yeah, all... you're probably quite a long way down the river at this stage. Well, uh, your audio is breaking up a little bit, but I think you're saying is regarding the, uh, you know, the security oaths and everything, everybody sign and, mm. and what with all that. Well, you know, I thought, yeah, you'd have to disclose uh, this, but, you know, they'd have to... Uh, They'd have to arrest all 20 of us. It would be really hard to explain, you know, the, it would bring the whole issue to light. But, but at the core issue of all this thing is that when you're going to the military, you're sworn to an oath to protect the Constitution of the United States from enemies foreign and, and domestic. domestic. Yeah. <laughs> And, and we definitely have a domestic intrusion here. And the, the ones who are in these illegal operations, in other words, they have no congressional oversight whatsoever, um, cannot, according to our legal counsel, Daniel Sheehan, they cannot cite the rule of law against the witnesses because they are illegal in their operation. Right, right. I've got a clip from uh, from uh, Daniel Sheehan. Uh, shall I play it? It's only a short one. I, I've got all of your clips here that you sent me. I've got quite a few. Yeah, probably probably a good one is you know in the in the very beginning. Um, you know, General Lovekin is one of ah, one yes. of the key that um, you know this whole thing started. You know, um, it, it happened before 1947, but. 1947, there was a lot of key things happening at that point. Um, and, you know, the Roswell incident, of course, happened. And, you know, that was in July of 1947. And, you know, 60 days later, the, the Central Intelligence Agency was, was formed. And um, 
what happened was, um, you know, they they acquired this technology, and uh, and they had to bring in the corporations because some of the greatest minds, you know, to reverse engineer this stuff was not in the military. You know, mm. it was in some of the high level corporations that had, you know, scientists and the and the technology in order to study this stuff. So, if you want, you can play the acquisition. Uh, one on Lovekin. It's about a minute. Yeah, I'll do about that. Two minutes. Yeah, it's just a minute yeah. or so. It's it's a, it's they're all very interesting clips. I'll play that one now. We were in the basement of the Pentagon, and in those days, that was in 1959. Uh, there was a tremendous amount of security there in the base of the Pentagon. Anybody who's worked there knows what I'm talking about. Colonel Hollibird brought out a piece of, of what appeared to be a metallic, it looked like a yardstick. It had uh, deciphering, it had, uh, it had encryption on it. He did it, describe them as being symbols of, of, uh, of instruction. And that's as far as he would go. But, but he, did in, he did infer that, that the instructions, whatever they might have been, uh, were something that, uh, that uh, was important enough for the military to, uh, to keep working on on a, on a constant basis. Uh, it seemed giant-like when I saw it because it was the first time I'd ever seen anything like this before, and and all eyes uh, were were just peeled on that particular thing. And when he told us what it was, it uh, uh, it was frightening. It was eerie. There, you could have heard a pin drop in the room when when it was first mentioned. Well, he said it would, had been taken from one of the craft that had uh, crashed in uh, in New Mexico and that it had been taken from a box of materials that the military was working on. Uh, they didn't use the word uh, reverse engineering at that time, but the, it was some, something similar to the reverse engineering uh, that they felt like uh, uh, they, uh, they needed to work on, and it was going to take years to do this. Extraterrestrial bodies, yes. There were either three or five, and, and uh, they were one was alive, uh, partially alive at the time that uh, this happened, and I do not know what may have happened to him after that. Very interesting. That's another clip from the uh, National Press Club press conference that uh, was held in Washington in 2001. Well, Dan, tell me, what are the uh, credentials of uh, Lovkin? I've forgotten his first name. Oh, Mark, I'm sorry. The, the audio sometimes chops in and out a little bit. Could you repeat one more time, please? I was just uh, saying that's a, a clip from the uh, press conference. What, uh, what are uh, Lovkin's uh, credentials? What, what, what does he do? Oh, General Lovkin? Yeah. Uh, General, General Lovkin was on Eisenhower's staff. He was a brigadier general. And, um, you know, he was assigned to you know, to Eisenhower's personal, uh, personal staff. And he was mm -hmm. working there at the Pentagon, you know, so he had firsthand connection and association with Eisenhower, which is during the time that they lost control to the corporations, which are, you know, basically controlled mm -hmm. by the secret government. Yeah. Um, and they, uh, they utilized our national security system to, uh, through the use of, uh, see, once <laughs> once they start reverse engineering this stuff, you know, and they have a meeting, you can imagine they they bring out this uh, this device, and all of a sudden, you can plug your whole house into it, and it doesn't pollute, creates unlimited amount of energy. You say so you have anti gravity, you don't need roads. It, it would change the entire oil, nuclear, uh, coal industry forever. Yeah. You know. Uh, which would totally destroy huge empires which are owned by these corporations. And so what they did was they found out a way to infiltrate the national security system using uh, unacknowledged special access projects. In other words, you can be the president, doesn't matter who you are, you know, the head of... Uh, the head of intelligence, you get denied. You don't even acknowledge that it even exists. So what they did was they went deep black with these unacknowledged access projects mm. to maintain the control and the dis dissemination of these technologies which which would threaten their um, energy empires and and this way they can maintain you know geopolitical control and and so forth and 
So what happened was Eisenhower was aware that he got sold out and knew that there was uh, interest that would not be putting into the best of, of hands for the, the future of humanity. Uh, you know, in his last speech before leaving office, he, you know, that's a famous speech where he uh, hmm. tried to warn the public. Military kind of industrial way, complex. You know. I, I've got the uh, little clip from Eisenhower. Shall I, shall I play that? Not to play too many clips, he, but well, I, he he named, he yeah, a good one. I think it's worth playing. Yeah, Lost Control, uh, mm. Love Can would be a good one. And then if you want to play the Eisenhower one for those who haven't heard it, they yeah, can I, hear I'll it run, again. I'll run the Eisenhower yeah. uh, one there. In the councils of government, we must car guard against the acquisition of unwanted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals. Wow. So that security and liberty may prosper together. Now that's, uh, that's, that was Eisenhower. I'll play the Love Kim but one what now. What happened was Eisenhower got sold out. I think that he realized that all of a sudden this 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 matter is is going into uh, into the control of corporations. He uh, realized that he was losing control. He realized that this this the phenomenon of of uh, of whatever it was that uh, that we were faced with uh, was not going to be in the best hands, and that that those were the as far as I can remember that was the expression that was used. It's not going to be in the best hands. The, so it has turned out to be. <laughs> the cat uh, of the military-industrial complex being in control of everything is well and truly out of the bag, though, these days, Dan. Um, I'm sorry, say again, Mark. Y yeah, I was just saying that the, 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 the problem that they're talking about, how the military-industrial complex will take over and, and, and rule society and countries and, and nations and regions... It's well and truly in the public domain now. Uh, everybody has heard about this at this stage. Yeah, you know, this is like, you know, this is back in the uh, back in the fifties, you know, and yeah, you know, and Eisenhower's Eisenhower's warning, you know, only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry. Well, that will never happen since there is now only, my God, there was about what fifty. Uh, 50 corporations controlling the media now there's only what four or five you know yeah um <laughs> that, that control everything and so what they've done is uh, the um the the national security system which is controlled by the intelligence community and the intelligence community controls the media and therefore if if our national security system is infiltrated and and has their agents or operatives, you, you could say, inside our system so that they maintain control of the media, the, the citizenry that needs to be alert and knowledgeable will never be alert and knowledgeable, uh, and they, therefore they maintain control. Well, there's, uh, there, there certainly appears to be a great deal of dumbing down through our media at the moment. We were just discussing it earlier. We're, we, we're not getting information through the n news sources or the uh, newspapers. It's, mm. uh, you know... It, it really is like... Uh, you couldn't call it children's news. It, it, it's, but it's all entertainment news, It is almost. entertainment news, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, there's the, you know, what's commonly known as the giggle factor, you know, when... Uh, after we did the um, did the National Press Club, I toured with Dr. Greer across the United States into major cities on the on the west coast of, uh, of the United States. I was, you know, in in Colorado, you know, San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco, you know, up and down the whole call, all the major cities. And we had like a thousand people, and we brought in the executive briefing video, which had a lot of testimonies. And we'd have standing ovations in each major city, mm. and 
you know, myself having a background, I was, you know, a broadcast engineer for many years, uh, ran the most powerful FM station on the West Coast, and uh, an ABC newsman, I just, uh, a trivial job, you know, just, you know, doing the news on the radio, no anchor man or anything like that. But, you know, still, I have an interest, I, my whole life I've been in communications, and so I took a keen interest in watching the, the TV crews come in, and they would come in and they interview, and then I'd watch how they what they did with the information, how they selectively edited it, you mm. know. In, in San Diego, they had dancing alien dolls going back and forth. Uh, in San Francisco, uh, they were said to make fun of it. And so what yes. they did was they said, oh, the Disclosure Project is looking to aliens to solve the world's energy problems, you know. Mm -hmm. And in uh, Oregon and Portland, uh, they were kind of all, you know, giggling and saying... Uh, uh, UFOs, free energies. <laughs> Let's get on with the big story. Let's see. Uh, the bozos meet the boncos in the playoffs this week, and uh, you know, <laughs> and take it on from there. You know, yeah. um, you know. So every time, without exception, um, the, the uh, giggle factor would be be put in, and you know, it's it's kind of a um, it it kind of works for them, you know, because yes. uh, you know, because a lot of people there's like a nervousness because it's something that the mainstream people who are don't you know not the group that listens to your your station obviously yeah. but the mainstream guy that you know sits out there has has his job and you know sits back on the couch and eats cheetos and watches jay leno or whatever um you know the average uh the average person not just the uh, people who uh, you know, go on the internet and search and look about UFOs or mm -hmm. interested and in, and study this stuff. But the mainstream audience that doesn't get this information, um, and the reporters that report this information, it's kind of it's kind of like this unknown thing that's kind of like it 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 evokes the giggle factor, so to speak. You know. Mm. Uh, because there, there's a certain nervousness because they don't understand the whole issue because there's so much conflicting, um, you know, it's such a zoo out there, you know, of information about the whole UFO thing. Well, you, you said um, in earlier interviews, Dan, that actually you felt it should have been a world-changing event, uh, the Disclosure Project, yeah. and really it's what it should have been. I mean, you actually had... That with the caliber of the of mm. the uh, people involved, General Lovekin alone should. Alone. I mean, if, if you were in court charged with murder, and somebody mm. of the caliber of General Lovekin testified against you, you would go away for a long time. So you oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So so why oh, why why is he a cuckoo because he says that? I mean, you you can't say that all of those all twenty of those people. You could excuse, you could maybe label a couple of them. Mm. You could say these are all just cooks or whatever, but. When you get that level, I mean, who do they, who do, who do that people, amount? Who do people want? The Secretary of State and the President? Who who are they after? The UN or what? What level do you have to go to before people will listen to what you're saying? Yeah, this shows you the power that the media has. You know, it's like uh, yeah, the credibility. If you had a murder trial and you have twelve people that are willing to testify under oath that yes, this person committed it. You know, mm. that person's going away. But, you know, here we have 500 witnesses, 20 of them, each of us yeah. said we're willing to testify under oath before Congress after we gave our testimony. You know, with that type of, uh, that type of testimony, you know, now here like um, uh, Dr. Carl Wolf, you know, with, uh, when he was working at the NSA facility in the Air Force and, you know, the, the guy breached the security and showed him that they had a base on the other side of the moon showing, you know, dome, mushroom, mm -hmm. towers, you know, all this going mm -hmm. on the other side of the moon. And, and he thought for sure, you know, that was going to be all over the news, yeah. uh, you know, 30 years ago, right? And when he gave his testimony, he says, you know, here it is 30 years ago, and I thought it was going to be all over the news. Well, guess what? Now 40 years has gone by. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it, you know, if you were to say, we've discovered an alien base on the other side of the moon, it would be like headlines, you know, all yeah. over the, the, the whole paper, right? Just that one of 20 testimonies, not to yeah. mention 57 different species being categorized and, 
and you know you know some of the testimonies and the credibility and the backup of the whole thing you can imagine that it i when i went there i thought i was going to be part of a um you know i was supporting a an event that was going to change life as we know it on this mm. planet everything you can imagine would be changed if these technologies were released Dan, I mean, if 500 geologists told me that the moon was made of green cheese, I'd at least have an inquiry if they were, if they were of that kind of caliber. But speaking, speaking of the moon, I remember listening to um, and reading a transcript, actually, because it's not great quality, of I think it was Michael Collins going around the dark side of the moon while he was orbiting during Apollo 11. Mm. Wasn't, isn't there some... Um, some descriptions there of structures and lights. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, we have you know, Edgar Mitchell, you know, speaking out, you know, mm. even saying, uh, let's see, he was, he was quoted. Um, I'm trying to find the. I don't mm. want to misquote him here. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to find the exact <laughs> quote. You know. I might have got wrong the wrong person but, there, but uh, I, I read a transcript I, I of somebody I, going well, around I, the moon. I think I've heard of testimony from an, uh, an astronaut who said, "Yeah, uh, he'd they, seen they, lights and structures well, of no, some sort." They were warned off of the dark side. Warned off of the moon, off the dark side. Oh, that's new um, to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm I, must, uh, there are lots of these things, and and some of them may be hoaxes that people have put out there and attributed to the wrong person, so maybe mm. I'm wrong, but I, I have seen a transcript from, I thought it was Collins while he was orbiting, uh, that said that he'd seen lights on the on the dark side. Uh, but I've heard something similar, and this was from the words, from the mouth of the astronaut, oh. so I think there is something in wow. there. Dan, did you find your, your, your quote? Um... I'm still trying to find it, but you know, in effect, he he said that uh, you know they stopped briefing you know uh, presidents after after Kennedy, you know, mm. uh, and you know everyone's heard of the alleged uh, um, you know affair between Marilyn Monroe and, and JFK. Mm. Yeah, and you know, uh, in in one CIA memo uh, that uh, let's see. They did a, FBI did a wiretap, and this uh, Central Intelligence Agency memo said that uh, in the uh, information they gathered, she said she had secrets to tell, no doubt from her twists, you know, with the president and attorney general. One such secret mentions the visit by the president at a secret air base for the purpose of inspecting things from outer space. Uh, she threatened to hold a press conference that would tell all. Now, she was... Uh, this wiretap is on August 3rd, 1962, mm -hmm. and she also made reference to a diary of secrets that the what the newspapers would do with such disclosures, you oh, know, because Kennedy... Like a book of Kennedy secrets, was, almost. So, you know, the, um, the date is August 3rd, and then it was, uh, it was like, two days later that uh, you know she had an untimely death mm. um, you know um, they've done everything in order to maintain the secrecy you know on this whole subject matter you know even um, James Forrestal who uh, you know one of our witnesses that that were mm. in the in the group uh, uh, Daniel Morris, who's an NRO operative, you know, testified that, you know, they uh, basically murdered him because he was going to, you know, disclose information. I was just but, about to say, Dan, um, I hope you're not a light airplane fan because uh, the, the <laughs> this that kind of thing seems to happen a lot these days. It, we've we've heard it from people talking about witnesses to 9/11 all the way through to what you're talking about, David Young. Yeah. And uh, the, the, a lot of people seem to be having heart attacks at, uh, at a very early age, and their light airplanes seem to be terribly well maintained. Yeah, well, I'm not saying anything new. No, you know? no, that's true. <laughs> this, is, this is old stuff, you know. Uh, you know, I have to say that, you know, I, I admire the UK because uh, after we did the press club, there was no protests or anything happening at the White House, uh, you know, or or on 
uh, at the Capitol. But in the UK, uh, Larry Warren, who was who joined me there that day, uh, he was on the phone to the UK, and he was saying that <clears throat> there's people out in front of Parliament picketing, saying uh, this uh, expose the secret government, release the extraterrestrial technologies wow. on signs. You know, they were picketing out <clears throat> there in front of Parliament. Mm -hmm. I must say, there's actually been and, maybe you know, Dan. That's, that's admirable, Dan. I'm not sure if you've you've noticed this in America, but certainly on uh, we get British TV here. We've noticed. I've certainly noticed an increase in the mention, shall we call it, to use a, a new speak type term, the mention of uh, UFOs and aliens in the news uh, over the last couple of years, and it, it's getting so frequent but, uh, now. as a real possibility now. Oh, yeah, documentaries, um, oh, politicians, it's all over the news even, in a very subtle way. Even the Pope. Yeah, even the Pope, and it's actually... They're actually doing it in the style that you you describe that they normally use to discredit such things. They're in they're inserting ideas that it's real and inserting ideas that it's happening now and inserting ideas mm. that there's an interaction and it seems to be ma breaking it right into the mainstream. They they even had a, a hoax UFO. I know it was a hoax, but it was a hoax UFO sighting on one of the soap operas a while ago. Ah. And and. I know, and I know a hoax is not really much, not very constructive, but there are, it seems to be really ramping up. It seems and to be not, cre creeping not, into the mainstream. Not in a comedic way. Yes, but not in a joke way. Yeah. Have you had the same yeah, experience over there? Yeah, you, you notice that too. Yeah, and you notice how they do it. <clears throat> they um, always do it just like CNN or anything like that. They always put out the idea, <clears throat> excuse yep. me, that... Um, the reality of extraterrestrials and UFOs is real. Mm. Never any mention of illegal operations uh, happening mm. within our government or anything of that nature, but they want to keep seeding into the populace to accept the reality of, of extraterrestrials, you know, which, you know, if you look at all the, <clears throat> all the media, you know, back when uh, children are in front of their TV sets back in in the early 50s mm -hmm. watching uh, you know uh, UFO was coming in and blasting and blowing up things you know um, they were like actually all this stuff was was uh, happening with the real stuff but it wasn't aliens weren't attacking us or anything like that and and you know all they do is they they shut down the nuclear missiles. They could have blown. They could blow us up and take us over a long time ago with their yeah. technology. But uh, you know, and and the media continues to see the evil alien. In fact, I'm thinking of going to go see uh, this evil alien movie this afternoon because I love, you know, to watch some creative <laughs> science fiction. But you know, it's uh, <laughs> you know all the evil alien movies. You look through history. You know that. You know. Um, you know. Some of the the main ones, you know, like Independence Day and everything, are like yeah. almost like government, uh, you know, psyops to instill this. Uh, you know, the one mm. main theme is that evil aliens are coming here to mm. take over our planet and kill us. You know, uh, that seems to be this constant theme. You know, yeah. I mean, it's great creativity, but you know, the um, the fact of the matter is that. Uh, you know, we, we, we're still here. <laughs> yeah. You know. To, um, to be fair to the movie industry, you need conflict in a movie to make it interesting, and uh, and we're not going to portray ourselves as the bad guys generally. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, yeah, it's 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 all fun for the most part, but it is there though. It is it is injected into the psyche of people, especially more realistic, more modern films. Uh, like um, Battle Los Angeles and well, things like I, I'm that. I'm just wondering with Dan, uh, what out of the 57 species of alien, what are we looking at? What, what kind of alien uh, was discussed? Uh, the greys or something else? Well, well you know, uh, there's a lot of different... Uh, a lot of different races, you know, on different levels of, of you know, I imagine evolution, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not... Uh, unlike Clifford Stone, I haven't, you know, uh, gone on any retrieval cases. I have a very small piece of a of a big 
picture puzzle that explains the, yeah. you know, when you put all 500 witness testimonies together, you know, I have one tiny little piece. Mm. Uh, other other people have much bigger, bigger chunks of the puzzle. And when you put them all together, it paints, the, it, it makes a very clear picture of what's been going on. But, uh, is there any mention of the reptilians, as David Icke has mentioned, or something like that? Uh, I, I'm sorry. On the Skype, I think uh, oh. <laughs> we sometimes the audio cuts out. So bear bear with me if I actually ask, ask mm. you to repeat once in a while. Oh, that's okay. And I'm just wondering, are the different varieties like the reptilians that David Icke talks about, and the greys from the Barney and from Betty ev- Miller uh, from everywhere? Uh, yeah. Yeah, everybody talks about those ones. Yeah. yeah. Is that? Yeah, the, is yeah, that that's th- interesting. Yeah, Clifford said they're all bitrepid, which are you know similar to us, you know, with the yeah. you know two arms and two legs, two eyes, and like that. They mm. are similar, you know, uh, they're conscious beings that uh, reside in different shape-looking bodies, you know, that uh, yeah. apparently have figured out. Uh, how this matrix works a lot more than than we're aware of you know we, i mean we just came out of horse and buggy what a hundred years ago you know mm, that's and, uh, true <laughs> that is true and, uh, or, or it could be a case like with human beings you have a uh, caucasian and you've got aborigine and you've got asian and true we, we've got a bit of variety it, ourselves you could assume that the uh, an alien race would have different types of races um, yeah. amongst them as well Yeah, I mean, you know, and and their their vehicles are like, you know, we have different vehicles on the freeway, you know, they have different shape looking <laughs> yeah. vehicles that they use too, you know. And uh you know, I uh I I actually uh you know, beside my military experience of of seeing an official report, you know, which you know, I have my headphones on, I'm typing this out on a typewriter, you know, this is ancient technology, 1969, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I'm reading this, and I can't believe what I'm writing, you know. And I, I looked at the San Francisco Chronicle the next day, trying to see something about this, you know. Uh, this was like, you know, totally alien to me, you know. Mm. Um, but you know, years later in the '70s, I uh, was traveling with my brother up uh, through the desert, and I pulled over the side of the road, and he. And he was outside stretching, and he flew the door open and he yanked me outside. And he says, "Look, look, look, look!" You know, like this. And he pointed up, and and a saucer went overhead, and oh, it God. was uh, must have been about 50 feet in diameter. It was totally white and glowing, and it went out across the desert, did a right angle turn, and shot. You know, you know, it could have been a secret government uh, military mm, uh, mm. vehicle, as far as I know. But you know, you know, you know, you don't know mm. if some of these are. ET craft or, mm. you know, the technology that, I mean, they've had faster than light craft back in the 50s, you know, mm. one of our witnesses, um, um, uh, uh, let's see, Mark McCandish, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, um, his uh, colleague Brad Sorison saw a uh, display that was set up for the uh, the 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 witnesses. Uh, in fact, if you want, you can play that last card, uh, McCandish. Yes, I've got that and one. I'll, I'll play that one now. Okay. Personally witnessed three flying saucers at a very large hangar at Norton Air Force Base. The presentation that Brad talked about was for top military brass and certain congressional, but the fact that there were three discs at that exhibit, these discs were hovering off the floor without any visible means of support. They were referred to as alien reproduction vehicles. Wow. Yeah, and, and alien what, reproduction vehicles. Can back we can we qualify uh, uh, McCandish? What 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 who what does he do? Oh, he was a um, he had a secret clearance, and he was a uh, illustrator for the military on 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 different craft and things. In fact, mm-hmm. I sat with him at the bar at the. Uh, at the Hilton in Washington, and he he drew out the entire. He was a he was an illustrator, so 
he went over with Brad Sorison and, and all the details of how the craft operated. I mean, this thing had this thing had a car battery at the bottom of it. It would start it up. Then it had like a Mercury Tesla coil in the middle with a secondary coil and this capacitor thing on the bottom. I have a electronics background, so I, I had a you know appreciation mm-hmm. to try to you know mm-hmm. understand what was going on in this. But this was ancient stuff. This was back in the 50s. You can mm-hmm. imagine with you know vacuum tubes and all that, but you know the technology is you know ben rich you know had a lockheed skunk works you know said before he you know before he died that we've already had the technology to take et home and that anything you can imagine we've already done you know so if you imagine like in science fiction like we have witnesses that have witnessed teleportation we have witnesses that have witnessed the anti-gravity we have witnesses that you know all the stuff you see in science fiction just about are hidden away in these black projects while the 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 normal world you know is looking at these rockets that you know we we send out in the space you know which you know they they shut down that program that was a waste of money Mm. when they already have anti-gravity back in the 50s you know so they have the secret space program going on Mm -hmm. where they've already been to the you know mars and the moon and everything like that but it's all uh all done behind this veil of secrecy that they keep this these incredible technologies while we're you know dealing with oil and radiation and gas guzzling vehicles and uh, you know and every, every aspect of technology you can imagine even in um, in in genetics and biology uh, you know in uh, in technologies that would, you know, heal people, uh, it, you know, everything you can imagine, different aspects of life, you know, are hidden in these in these black projects. While the rest of the world is going through, you know, these wars over oil and 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 this re- retarded state that has been maintained because of these corporate interests that seize control, like. Um, uh, like Eisenhower spoke of, that mm. he got sold out, you know, and mm. it's been that way ever since. Dan, um, am I right? We're almost out of time, but am I right in assuming that the Disclosure Project is the group that forced the American government to to state uh, relatively recently that they had uh, no contact with extraterrestrials of any sort? And so, and the, don't you have a, a petition or something going? Is that, have I got the right group there? Oh, sorry, Mark. One more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dan, did, did the Disclosure Project uh, recently force the American government to declare that they've had no alien contact? Was that the Disclosure Project that, uh, that pushed for that? Oh, that is uh, working toward ET contact? Uh, I'm, not uh, sure, I'm not sure. It, it was a. Um, uh, there is one of those systems whereby, if so many people sign a petition, the government has to uh, has to answer it. And I think the White House issued a statement saying that they had no uh, ET contact. They did that recently. I'm not sure if that was connected to the disclosure project or not. Oh, oh, um, yeah. There's I mean like a uh, something you have to sign that if you have contact or, or something like that. A uh, uh, you know, a it, your audio chops in and out, so it's a little yeah. hard to hear. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay, Dan. It, it's it's one of those things where you, uh, if say a hundred thousand people sign, they have to answer the question. I hope you got me that time. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you get so many, God. if you get so many signatures, you have to get an answer. Is that what you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh, like signing a petition. Yeah. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. If ten thousand people, yeah, you know, in fact, I signed that petition, and uh, you know what I got back? Um, let's see. I'm gonna bring this up here. Um, it was. Now this is this is very interesting because this shows what the um, what the uh, what the current uh, administration uh, comes back with. Mm-hmm. Um, it comes back from the letter from the White mm-hmm. House that says uh, 
searching for ET, but no evidence yet, you know. And, you know, um, it says, uh, many scientists, mathematicians have looked with statistical mindset the question whether life, it seems that, you know, uh, come to the conclusion, odds are pretty high. It might be among the trillions of stars in the universe, a planet that is uh, like ours, that is home to life. Uh, uh, the odds of us making contact with any of them, especially any intelligence, are extremely small, given the distances involved, right? <laughs> but that's all statistics and speculation. And the fact is, we have no credible evidence of extraterrestrial presence here on Earth. That was a response from the White House mm. just recently from a... Uh, that's the one. Uh, something I signed. You know, I uh, I realized that uh, that we needed to contact... Uh, when we, we traveled across the United States and the major cities, we're trying to get people to write letters because if they email uh, the representatives and the president, uh, usually that gets deleted. And so what I did was I sat up all night uh, with a pizza and a programmer and I made an online fax for the Disclosure Project. Uh. And I had about uh, 30,000 uh, faxes come in from all over the world. I also had it to world embassies as well as, you know, to the senators, congresspeople, and the president. And I asked everybody to send me the responses that they got. And as I, I had, uh, there was about 80 responses out of 30,000. <laughs> and it, I started to dissect them and look at, you know, how they were responding. And uh, about uh, 70% was, thank you if the uh, extraterrestrial subject comes to uh, Congress, we'll keep your views in mind. Thank you very much for your opinion. <laughs> uh, and the rest of them, the other uh, 30% was official denials from NASA that, you know, there, there is no, you know, no life and other than here, you know, and, and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. So I, I started to see there was a pattern of of because I noticed there was a certain quotes that they would do that there was a pattern of indoctrination for uh, the people on Capitol Hill to to respond in a particular way mm. uh, to this issue well Dan we're well out of time now I think um, any any plans for the future Dan quickly uh, wh yes. what are you up to um, Me? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> well, I've been, you know, ever since uh, we we were trying to release the technologies uh, over a decade ago, uh, we gave up on trying to release the technologies out of the black projects. And so for the last decade, I've been, I was a technical consultant with Dr. Greer and Professor Loiter uh, traveling around the planet meeting with inventors mm -hmm. for over unity technology. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. I've seen uh, technology that has worked, and you know, I've 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 seen the threats that happen to the inventor. It's just like the UFO issue, you know. Yes. It, they want to maintain secrecy in that area because it's the same interests of you know, we're going to maintain the keep that oil radiation and uh, coal happening, you know, uh, you know, and uh, you know, I'm still. Uh, you know, I can't say too much. Uh, have, point, you, but have, you any, have you got any on it? Have you got any talks? <laughs> Are you doing any talks across the country or anything like that? Or uh, I'm sorry, say again. Oh, sorry, Dan. Are you doing any talks? Have you got any upcoming talks uh, or appearances events. or events? Oh no, you're the only one I've done in uh, in ages. <laughs> oh, well, we're we're very honoured because uh, the last time I heard you was on Coast to Coast with George Norrie, and I, I'm quite a fan of George Norrie, so <laughs> I'm very pleased to be speaking to you as well. Yeah, that was uh, my God. That was what in 2007 or it 2008 was. or something. Mm, it yeah, was. yeah, I've. I've I've been keeping pretty quiet, you know, so I'm not a big threat to the secret government. Well, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, Dan, we'll, we'll call you back. We'll talk to you again. Yeah, we'll get you on again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, I really appreciate, really appreciate you guys getting the uh, information out there. You know, it's like, you know, it's what we have to do is hold our media accountable because that's yeah. the bottle. That's where disclosure is not happening. Mm. Mm. Is they got control of the media, and what we need to do is is show. Uh, it, it's it's a hard one because they the corporations control the media, 
and uh, you know it's hard to reach the mainstream public so mm. long as they maintain control. Mm. Well, the the, uh, the good thing about the uh, the internet is that it's diluting the media greatly, mm. and uh, we we may only have a small slice of that pie, right, but we but stole it from them. And yeah, we, we'll be we'll be quite happy knowing that. <laughs> Thank well, you very much bye, for bye. Uh, coming on, Dan. Thanks ever so much, Dan. Hey, I really enjoyed it with both of you. Thank you for uh, helping helping uh, trickle out a little bit more information out there oh, to the mainstream. Anytime. Thanks, Dan. Goodbye, Dan. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Bye-bye. That was Dan Willis from www.disclosureproject.org. Yep. Very interesting stuff. Dan. Uh, so uh, all these important military men come out and say that UFOs and aliens are real, and they're all ignored. All yes. Yeah. Pretty pretty high ranking, has to be said. Oh, very high rank. My goodness, did you see some of the uh, some of the names, some of the clips we were playing there? Yeah. Isn't it crazy? It's crazy. Yeah. Right. That's it. We're okay. out of time. Uh, next time, on the other hour. Oh, really? What? You're going to start funny people in what's happening next time, are you? I've forgotten brave? who's coming on. You know nothing. <laughs> 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 Bye. <laughs> You're listening to Alternative Future Radio, home of the weird, resting place of the paranormal. We'll take you to the furthest reaches of the galaxy and beyond. Strange phenomena, aliens, psychics, cryptozoology, conspiracy, holistic health, and UFOs. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. I must say, or must ask, should I say, what made you choose that? Location and 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 building to, structure. What is, is there a reason behind that? I um, I've always had a fascination with uh, geometry, and uh, I uh, many years ago I worked with the uh, top scientists from IBM. I was working with uh, some interesting aspects of of paranormal, I guess you could say, with uh, uh, geometry and consciousness and things like that. So it wow. just you know and my interest and uh, so I've always been fascinated with uh, you know geometry and how it all ties into all this, a, a kind this of a the whole scheme of things <laughs> it's a kind of a feng shui type of thing is it uh, I'm sorry what was that is it a type of a feng shui principle um, I'm sorry the audio is a little bit hard I'm oh. one, one more time Go for it, Bell. <laughs> is, it a, is it a type of a, a feng shui? It's where you move the furniture around and paint the house in certain colors to, 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 to uh, improve your living standards. Oh, oh, you mean feng shui? Feng yeah. shui, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, um, they, they, in the, according to the masters, they like rounded shapes. So, you know, yeah. the geodesic dome fits in with uh, good feng shui. <laughs> I saw that there, and I, um, I was thinking... Uh, probably for the third time today, I'm about to mention Buckminster Fuller. He uh, he's a very interesting chap. And I, I, when you talk about geometry and the shape of your house, you, I assume you must know a lot about his works. Yeah, what a great mind! I, I love this this thing about you know, don't fight the existing reality; just create a new one and makes the old one obsolete, and everybody moves over to it. I love that that quote from him. I actually got to use the word hyperbolic paraboloid in conversation today. You don't get to do that very often. <laughs> a friend of mine was making a YouTube video and he was showing the Olympic Stadium for the diving and it is a hyperbolic paraboloid very uh, odd, unusual shape which I believe he invented anyway, anyway. Basil's, Basil's giving me the uh, the <laughs> eye start talking about what you're supposed to well, be talking about <laughs> well, Dan, we have Dan here and apparently I'm like the many millions mm -hmm. of other people in the world yep who uh, should have known about the uh, Disclosure Project, but didn't know for some extraordinary reason. Mm. Uh, the Disclosure Project, if I'm correct in saying this, is uh, where uh, many of the uh, military and um, Air Force bigwigs <laughs> came out to uh, say, well, what you thought about UFOs and aliens was true. They do exist. And yet I've never heard, heard of it. How can that be, Dan? Huh. Um, Red Cross. You could contribute to the March of Dimes. You could donate to the Salvation Army. Or for just $1.99,
you could get the Alternative Future Radio Android application and do something that will actually make a difference in your life. Find out more at AlternativeFutureRadio.com. Okay, so hopefully uh, we should now have uh, Mr. Dan Willis on the line. Uh, Dan, do we have you there? Yes, I am here. Excellent, excellent. Uh, you're in Oregon, Dan, and uh, you're you're up a mountain somewhere. We were just we were just mentioning that before we came on air. You 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 live off grid, up a, up a hill. Yeah, I live uh, out in the wilderness on top of a mountain off grid, and, uh, and this is linked through uh, a remote uh, repeater that uh, is going through Skype. Fantastic, fantastic. I must say, I was looking at your, I think I saw a picture of where you live some, on a website somewhere. It's a geodesic dome that you live in, isn't it, Dan? Yeah, it's a cement geodesic dome. It's a hurricane, tornado, fireproof, just ready for today's weather. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, before we get on to, um, to, to why, why you're here and the Disclosure Project and all... You're listening to the Out There Hour on AlternativeFutureRadio.com. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Out There Hour with Basil and Mark, don't you know? We're going to have a smashing time today. The Out There Hour on Alternative Future Radio. The Out There Hour with Basil and Mark. www.alternativefutureradio.com Yay! Yay! Good morning, Mark. <laughs> Good evening, Basil. Good afternoon, the world. <laughs> I'm just looking at our Skype. Yeah. They're all on it, all our guests. All Josh, our guests are all on. Joshua Shapiro, Paul Gershio. Pat Chunard. Um, God, we've got pretty much everybody, Patrick. Hunt, Jonathan Evans, Andrew Ed Johnson. Willis, yeah, Dr. David Hunt. Dr. David Annie Hunt. Annie Cheslick coming on soon. Coming on soon. There's old Terry. Wonderful. Oh, yes, sure. speaking, of guests, speaking of yes, guests, guests, anyway. guests, guests. Yes, uh, Dan, Today's guest. Dan Willis. Dan Willis, yes. Who is he? He is a former naval uh, intelligence officer of, of sorts. I think he worked in... Uh, he's, in he's, a Vietnam, he's a Vietnam vet. We for, oh, we, 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 should, we should just ask him about that. He's in a, yeah, well, but, but we won't. <laughs> he's... <laughs> He was, he was an ABC newsman. He was, yeah. Um, and he's engineer. worked as an engineer as well, yeah. Um, and basically, he is one of the, I think it's 20 or so, people who testified at the Disclosure Project's uh, National Press Club event in Washington, D.C. in the year 2000. Well, what's the D Disclosure Project, you ask? And uh, So you may well ask. So you may well. Are you um, going to answer? I'm, go I'm going to ask and answer that. It's... Uh, <laughs> It's, you've got high-ranking military, high-ranking air force, high-ranking surveillance. It's a who's who of top brass. Uh, coming out to say, yes, aliens are real. And we've been uh, cohorting with them for some time. Yes. Reverse engineering their technology and all manner of other things. And UFOs. Them. And the mainstream media totally buried it, made a joke of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And these guys are still uh, struggling to get the uh, news out. So if you've ever wondered, are aliens real? Well, according to the top brass, yes, they are. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, www.disclosureproject.org is his website. And, uh, well. It's, it's quite a big deal. It is. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, so some of these people are very, uh, very well respected. Very important. Shall we do it? Yeah, let's talk to Dan. Do you know what comes first? Advert. <laughs> you could give to the... 